All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Capstone Kickoff. Kick off. So first, uh, a couple of reminders. Um, I guess first to start blogs. So the idea of blogs is, well, not the idea of blogs, but to graduate, you need to have four blogs. Most of you have done two and a half. I think that's the current average. Um, if you want, um, or what you need to graduate is before the 22nd of October, which is your last day to pass your capstones, you just have had, you just need to have had submitted four blogs and then you're good to go. So in terms of expectations of blogs, if you can't think of anything to write about since the last blog due date, that's okay. Just know that you do have about a month more to finish out four blogs. So uh, whether you want to write like a two-part series for those of you who have two outstanding or more, for those of you who have multiple blogs outstanding, you can actually write multiple blogs on your capstone, for example. So you're more than welcome to do that. So that's on blogs, very, very important because you cannot graduate if you don't finish four blogs. Um, all right, also career coaches. So this week, I know a couple of you have already gotten reached out to by a career coach, but you should be expecting an email from a career coach. It will come from their own Flatiron School email, not like a general like careers at Flatiron School uh, email like that. So do be on the lookout, check your spam folders, um, if you don't hear from anyone by the end of this week, uh, please let me know so I can check on that for you because you should start um, at least talking to your career coach and setting up some goals. You don't have to be fully in that process yet because you are working on your capstones this month, uh, but it's good to at least introduce yourself, have that introductory kickoff call, uh, set some expectations. Uh, that will set you up for success. So you're not like starting from scratch on the career phase once you're done with capstones. All right. Questions on career coaching, any of that so far? There is actually weekly a, a career coach AMA that happens um, every Thursday. So if you're interested or you have questions specifically for career coaching, um, you can check that out. There's always someone there. Uh, there is always a career coach answering questions there. All right, um, any questions on that? Again, for those of you who just popped in, I just sent, uh, just mentioned that if you don't hear from a career coach by the end of this week, so please let me know. Uh, I'll check in on you all at the end of this week as well. All right, uh, next, uh, Canvas materials. So um, access to Canvas and access to all the links and stuff and all of the material, because I know that not everybody, well, I myself didn't get through all of the curriculum while I was a student. So um, as a Flatiron School student, you do get access to all the material forever because uh, I'm going to send out a list of instructions on how to download all Canvas content. So that includes all of the reading materials, all of the labs from Illumidesk. There's a way to actually download your Illumidesk server so you have your finished labs. I believe they'll download in like a zip file or something uh, that you can actually keep forever and ever. On top of that, there's also a list of GitHub lab links that I'll send out as well. Uh, so I'll send that out because you do lose access to Canvas three weeks after your graduation date. What graduation date means and when that is, I'll, I'll tell you all in a little bit as well. Cool. Um, ooh, also, because this week, I it's like kind of perfect timing. On Thursday, there's going to be a round of capstone presentations that I think it's good timing for you all as you're trying to come up with your capstone ideas to see what other people are doing. So this is actually the live cohort. So the in-person, but now it's COVID, so not really in person. But this is the um, this is one of the live cohorts. They their program is 15 weeks instead of 20, but they're also doing their capstone presentations this Thursday. So the Zoom link is here if you want to check that out. Questions on that? All right. So in terms of study groups and office hours during this time, um, all the study groups I have put what the topic is for the study group. Uh, for this week, they will mainly be recap study groups. Uh, tomorrow we'll go, go over APIs and web scraping. Um, we're going to talk about SQL and database creation on Thursday. Now, I'm not really going to go over queries again, but more so it'll be how do you set up your own database? That's the kind of stuff I'll be talking about. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, several ways that you can go through that. One of them includes putting it on AWS. 
Um, and then on Friday, I'll be talking about leveling up your EDA and how to create a dashboard either within Jupyter Notebook. Uh, once you have Jupyter Notebook dashboard, um, one of the coming weeks, I'll talk about how you can put that on a, uh, on a web page. All right, so for any of, for all of the study groups during this phase, um, the material will not take up the full hour. So I'll be hanging back here for the full hour to take any capsule questions at all. Um, if you don't have any questions, feel free to drop off. But if you do, like at 2.55 Eastern time, you can pop in, I'll still be here. Um, since we're on that note, next week is gonna be a little bit shorter in terms of terms of study group. I am going to be out of office for the Thursday and Friday. So I've actually just taken these study groups off the calendar. Uh, but uh, what we have next week, we have a couple other a uh, couple other study groups. And yeah, I'll talk more about that later when I have the full, uh, when I talk about the guidelines, but any questions with like, in terms of scheduling, expectations, what the study groups look like, career coaching, any questions on that note, on those notes? All right. Um, ooh, not everyone has scheduled their phase four project review. so. Please remember to do that. Um, if you presented your project uh, last week, you just need to book a 30 minute slot, that's good enough. But feel free to book a longer one too if you wanna talk more about like your capstone or just have more time to talk about stuff. Uh, happy to do that as well. So please schedule your reviews. Try to do it this week. I know I'm running out of time slots this week. Um, so yeah, because I am out Thursday and Friday, Next week, no more reviews after Wednesday. So take note of that. Cool. All right, so let's get into these capstone guidelines. Uh, over here, I've linked the Canvas course. This is also where you will submit the PDS. By the way, the submission is all the same as all of our other projects. So feel free to look at this. Uh, this is our office hours schedule. Um, I, as I just mentioned, these are going to be the study groups for this week. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what a project pitch is, but you have to let me know what your project is going to be by Monday. Um, so I'll give you all the weekend to think about it if you need that time, but of course, the sooner the better. Um, so by Monday, um, you have to tell me what your project idea is. If not, I'll keep slacking you to, I don't know, <laughs> ask you for ideas. Um, cool, these are all be the um, study groups for the coming weeks as well. When we get closer to those, I'll explain what those are all about. Um, so presentations will be on Tuesday, October 12th. So, so far we've been doing our presentations on the last Friday, but having an extra weekend is always useful, especially for, for the capstone. So the presentations for the capstone will be not on week four of the capstone phase, but the following Tuesday. So if you look over here, capstone week two, three, four, um, capstone presentations happen on this day. So take note, you have that extra weekend to tidy up your presentation if you'd like. Um, I know the past few presentations, I mentioned that it doesn't have to be like the final, final product. Um, with this, it is preferable that it is the final product because these are your final projects. Um, but so yeah, I guess that extra weekend will help. Um, on that note, you also see that there's uh, an MVP presentation. So I'll talk more about that next week, but uh, at the beginning of week three, you'll be having to give like a midway through presentation, which is actually very, very important to know because uh, basically if you're ever midway working through a project, either for work or if you're talking about during an interview, that style of presentation is important to get used to. So I'll talk more about that next week. But in terms of expectations, just know that midway through, you're gonna have to give a presentation about your project. All right. I think that's most of the uh, logistical details. Any questions about that before I start talking about uh, coming up with your ideas? Okay, so coming up with your project ideas, all these projects are going to look quite different, uh, which is very, very exciting. And pretty much you your project can be anything that we've hit on from phase two onwards. It just has to include some sort of machine learning modeling and that's good enough. Um, of course, there are other requirements that I'll talk about in a bit, but 
regression is fair game for a capstone project. I think a lot of people think that because we did regression back in phase two, that's not good enough, but you can 100% do a regression for your capstone project. You can also do classification for your capstone project. It doesn't have to be one of those phase four topics that we did. Um, of course, you can build up and combine a bunch of different things. Those we can talk about individually. Um, but yeah, anything that includes any sort of machine learning is fair game. And remember, linear regression is also machine learning. Even unsupervised uh, algorithms will count as well. All right, so what I've done here, I've actually linked a couple project planners. So different people like the different styles of planners. Uh, there's this one that, I mean, of course, not every um, segment is going to be relevant for every project, but to the most of your ability, if you would like, some people actually do find this easier to make a copy of this uh, fill it out with your project information and send this to me. That's actually a really, really easy way to pitch your project if you don't want to like explain everything um, in like, I don't know, a long paragraph. You can use one of these. So this is more about like the different components of your project. And this is another, I guess, basically spreadsheet version of that same thing. So it's up to you which one you prefer. Feel free to make a copy of either one. You also don't have to use one of these. Um, I've seen people who prefer using things like Trello boards or even their own Google Doc. You can do any one of those. Um, the way that you go about managing your own project is very much up to you and is also something for you to kind of figure out uh, during this month. Happy to share my tips if you want to talk about it as well. So these are a couple of capstone planners. Just know that um, not every field will be relevant. So if you can't think of how you want to fill in, like, um, is the data you collect a representative of the problem to be solved? If you can't really answer that question, maybe you have like image data and it's not 100%, uh, you can't really answer that question in a way that makes sense for your business context. That's not the end all be all for your product. So just know that there is expected to be some blanks in here that you can't fill up because not every project will fit every, uh, every part of these these planners. All right. Um, so yeah, your project pretty much has to be an equivalent of an end of phase project with something added. Um, for these projects, I'm going to be a lot more stringent on business cases. For those of you who have started your reviews uh, for this phase as well, I've talked more about business case, a little bit more in depth on the business case and contextual tying in context with your technical work. So I will be focusing a lot more on that because that's really the part that you can speak to during interviews. Um, also, uh, one thing to note that's very, very important is for your capstone project, you cannot take an off the shelf data set. So that means no Kaggle data sets, no, um, no like UCI machine learning repository data sets. You will have to synthesize your own data. Now that can mean a few different things. Of course, most straightforward, get your data from an API or web scrape your data. Other things that you can circumvent is if you have a bunch of different data sets, maybe a bunch of CSVs, and you are uh, you are synthesizing all of those CSVs into one, that circumvents that, um, that no off the shelf data set. So if you have a lot of tables or multiple tables that you're putting together for your analysis, that's fine as well. Uh, but for the most part, most people get their data from APIs or web scraping. And by the way, that's what our review will be on tomorrow. Questions about the data requirement. I'll say if you're unsure, just send it to me. And if I tell you, okay, then it's okay. All right. Um, so um, I talked briefly about this at the end of last week while we were doing our check-in, but um, places to start. I, I think like half of the people here maybe, or half of the students that I've ever had, uh, the hardest part is coming up with a project idea. I shared with some of you last week that like I made the mistake of flailing around a bunch of different ideas. So I only had like four days, three, four days to do my capstone project. And it was not at the level that I wanted it to be when I graduated. Uh, so I ended up working on it for a bunch more after. But um, having only four days to work on a capstone project was very, very stressful. So I really hope that that doesn't happen. Uh, so here are some places to start. Um, are there uh, specific models that you would like to use? Maybe you really enjoyed using XGBoost in your classification project, or maybe uh, you want to incorporate some NLP in your project because that's what you didn't do last phase. So those are all things that you can do. You can also sort of think of this from a portfolio perspective. Like, is there an industry that you want to gear your portfolio towards? We can definitely talk about that at one-on-ones if you'd like. Um, do you want to have more 
um, variety on your resume. Usually on your resume, you put three different projects. And so based on your last two projects, do you want something that complements or in contrast your existing, your other two projects nicely or not? Uh, that's kind of up to you. Also happy to talk about any of these one-on-one uh, -on -one with you guys. Um, so yeah, any specific industries, for example. This can also connect to data sets that you're interested in exploring. Uh, if you found like a really nice data set and not many people take this route, I will say, because not many people chance upon a very nice data set uh, during the course. But if you found a really nice data set that you want to use, you can start there too. Um, you can also explore towards data science. There are a lot of projects being done and being written about on towards data science. So on Medium, if you want to search data science projects, you'll find a bunch. Um, what I actually did and what a few students have found kind of useful as well is if you already have an idea of a starting point for your project or you know like one of the threads of your project, you can do a GitHub search because GitHub is literally a like it has repositories of projects. And so um, when I knew I wanted to do an SVD recommendation system, but I didn't know what data to use, uh, what I did was I just looked at recommendation systems SVD on GitHub and found what other data sets pe other people were using and then used that as the starting point for inspiration to find what data set I ended up using. Um, I actually ended up using the, the Yelp <laughs> API for my project, which I know isn't like novel and new, but it's an API, so it counts. Questions about that, or anyone has any comments on coming up with ideas? All right, um, so when you're pitching your project idea, which uh, please do this week or on Monday, um, some things that you should iron out, because if not, these will be the questions that I ask back to you. Uh, what is your data going to be? Uh, for a lot of people, data is the hardest part with this project because sometimes the data that you want to use is not publicly available or freely available as well. I am not expecting anybody to pay for data. So try not to pay for data unless you really want to. Uh, you don't have to pay for data. Um, so tell me what the data is, how you're sourcing it. Uh, are you able to get it or not? I mean, that's very important too. Um, also, what are the models that you're intending to use? Uh, is it going to, you don't have to tell me like specifically, I want to do XG boost or whatever, but tell me that you want to do a classification project or regression project or a neural network forecasting. You have to tell me that as well. Also mention briefly your business case. What is the goal of your project? Sometimes it's straightforward, sometimes it's not. Uh, so if you feel like it's not so straightforward or I guess if I don't feel like it's straightforward enough, I will ask what your intended use case for your project is and you should be able to tell me what that is. Uh, I mean, all of these things are very fluid, especially because this is only week one of four. Uh, these are definitely subject to change based on how your maybe how your EDA goes or how your modeling goes. So um, just start with an idea first that we can tweak uh, over the next coming weeks if needed. Um, here also, this I would say I probably will not expect everyone to come up with uh, on week one. But the idea of an MVP is fairly important in the tech space. So MVP, and as you saw over here, these are MVP presentations. MVP basically stands for minimum viable product. And that's pretty much like, okay, if I didn't have four weeks, but if I had like one or two weeks, what can I quickly throw together to be a product? Um, MVPs mean very different things in the world of software engineering versus data science. So for data science, it would sort of be like, okay, what is your baseline model going to be like? If I just needed to push out a model and I don't have the time to like run a super long, like eight hour grid search, what will that be? Uh, we'll talk more about the details of MVP next week for sure. But something that's also good to think about is, yeah, if you have limited time, what can this project look like? What should this project look like if I had the full four weeks? And what could this project look like if I had unlimited time? So those are good ways to like tear out and scope out what's possible for your project. All right, I'll talk more about these next week, but any questions before I talk about graduation? Okay, so graduation date, um, is a little bit confusing at Flatiron. So basically, you have to pass your capstone review and submit all your blog requirements by October 22nd. 
And that's basically because that's two weeks after week four, the Friday of week four of capstone. So you have those two weeks to finish out your capstone. If you don't, you run the risk of having to redo the capstone phase with the next cohort. We don't want to do that. So do note that October 22nd is the deadline. Actually, what's funny is my, I started flat art school October 22nd in like 2018. So fun fact. Um, anyways, submitted on Canvas, same way as other projects. Also, you have to have four blogs, presentations that I mentioned earlier, October 12th. So October 22nd is the deadline. It's the last day you can pass your capstones. However, what if you've diligently done all of your blogs and you wanted to do your capstone review on like October 12th, like right after the presentations. Now, if that's the case and all of your deliverables, you've passed your project review on October 12th, your official graduation date will be that date. So your official graduation date, the date that will appear on your certificate will be the day that you pass your final deliverable, either your last blog or your project. So therefore, whenever I say you have something that goes away X number of days or weeks after graduation, that's the day that you start counting from. Probably what's most relevant to you is that, let's say you pass your project on October 15th, uh, which I think should be the Friday. Yeah, so let's just say you pass your project and finish all your blogs on October 15th. October 15th will be your official graduation date. Now, I forgot if I mentioned that earlier, but Canvas, you will lose access to three weeks after your official graduation date. So if you want to do your downloading of your Canvas materials, of which the instructions I'll put on here and send out to you later today, um, make sure you do that within three weeks after your official graduation date. Uh, if during this time you forget when your official graduation date you can, is, you can let me know and I, I'll tell you because I, I, I'll have all of that information too. Um, okay. So yeah, it is the date that you pass your review or the date you submit your last blog, whichever one is later. Uh, within two weeks of your graduation date, your certificate will be emailed to you. It will be in a PDF form. Um, and then in early November, actually not early November, early November, no, late, early November, yeah. You'll get an email with instructions on how to download the Canvas content, but I will send you those instructions today as well, because pretty much there's no content in phase five everything that you need off Canvas, you would have already, you already have access to. Um, so the graduation ceremony, uh, basically there is a graduation ceremony every month and that contains all of the graduates that graduated in the month prior. So even though your official graduation date might be like late October, um, the graduation ceremony, which is not your official graduation date, will happen in early to mid November. It's usually like a Thursday, evening. It's a giant Zoom call with every student of Flatiron School that graduated in the month of November. I read your names. Um, you get like a little moment of recognition. So that's always nice and fun. Um, so you'll get that invite to graduation in around early November, late October. Um, and also part of this invite will be a form to get Flatiron School swag. I think you all get like a t-shirt and a hoodie but that says Flatiron School on it. So that's exciting. Cool. Um, I'll talk more about caps and reviews at another time. Um, and then also Slack. So what happens with Slack is you remain on this Slack channel as long as you're still in the career coaching phase. Um, so up until you get your new job, you'll be in this current Slack channel. We have another Slack channel called Flatiron Alumni, and you'll get an invite to that on your official graduation date. So whenever you pass your review, or I think the week after you pass your review and finish your last blog, you'll get an invitation to Flatiron Alumni Workspace. Now I'm also on that workspace. You can create a cohort channel on that workspace as well, but that's more for networking with alums of Flatiron School and the conversations that happen there are a lot more job centric, which will be more relevant to you all then anyways. Um, I will also ask that after you graduate, please, if you wanna reach out to me, reach out to me on that Slack channel because this Slack channel that I have here gets really flooded by whoever my current students are. Uh, so yeah, that will be coming your way as well. Um, all of these details, if anything's not clear, because obviously graduation is not the main thing on your minds right now, it's more the capstone. Uh, I'll definitely go over these uh, at a, um, in like a few weeks too. But yeah, any questions at this point regarding graduating? graduating? Okay. Um, cool. So again, 
these are a bunch of example projects. I do want to caveat the fact that a lot of these students have been working on their projects after graduating. So if you see some like really, really impressive project that seems like, how did this person do this in four weeks? Is very likely because they continued working on it after graduation, which is something that you all can definitely do as well. Um, so if you see anything that looks insane, just know that they are they probably worked on it for months after graduating. Um, but these are all of my, these are all my former students. So if you want to talk about more details about any of these projects, let me know. I'm happy to talk about maybe some of like their thought processes and coming up with these ideas too. Um, yeah, what, when I went through this program and I was doing captions, I was like the second ever class of data science students. So I had like not even six projects to look at as reference. So now you have all of these. And I believe on the on Canvas, you have more examples as well. But I think they only give you five others. Um, but yeah, any questions um, about anything so far as we get into this capstone phase? All right, well, for this week, it's just going to be a bunch of review study groups. Um, today included, I'm going to stay on the line until 3 p.m. Eastern to talk about any ideas, questions you might have. Um, this week is going to be all reviews. My expectation for you all to start coming up with ideas. You can also send me multiple ideas if you have multiple and you want to get my take on which one makes more sense or is more doable for a capsule or more interesting for interviews, whatever it is, more than happy to look at whatever ideas you come up with. Uh, but please let me know what you intend your, for your capstone to be by Monday. Um, sooner the better, of course. If it's something that you have like half an idea, also happy to look at it. I feel like any starting point um, is good for me to know. Cool. Any other questions before I stop the recording here? All right.